Well, we've got a lot to talk, lot to talk about today uh, with our guest. Um, guest today is FDN practitioner Danielle Demchok, and she's from New York City. And I was looking back, and maybe, Danielle, you can uh, confirm for me or not, I think around a 2009, 2010 graduate, so kind of early on in the FDN course. Is that what you can re- recollect? Yes, it's grown so much since I started. It was pretty big then, but now it's just huge. Hearing you go through all of the different countries and everything, it's it's so exciting. Yeah, I think it was about even two. I think it was more like even two thousand eight. Okay, is all that, right. So even that, a little before yeah. me. Yep, two thousand eight is yeah. kind of when it kind of started to roll. So awesome. So so it was online at that time, and it wasn't the get to see read in person situation. That's correct. It was online at the time, and um, yeah, and I, there were quite a few people in the class, which it was really exciting, and uh, there were so very few uh, courses in functional medicine and at that time, and it was just really exciting to um, have the opportunity to do that at that time. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Awesome stuff. So, so I kind of like to know, starting out, usually kind of a little bit of background here. So, so right now you're sure. doing FTN and you've got some yoga things and you've got some dancing in your background. Maybe give us an idea of kind of um, your background there a little bit. Sure. Um, so I can kind of talk about uh, why I got into FDN and then kind of lead into um, my practice today. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, so I had been dancing professionally. I was working at the Met here in New York City um, in a number of different dance companies over the years, and I was going from rehearsing like six hours a day to then not knowing what was wrong. Like it was hard to get through an hour and a half class of ballet. So I'm classically trained, but uh, professionally I have performed modern. So um, I was... I I got so tired, I couldn't even walk up and down the stairs, and I really was going from doctor to doctor. I didn't know what was going on, and uh, then I happened to come across a functional medicine doctor at the time and started to introduce to me that I had been extremely adrenally fatigued, and I had had a gluten intolerance, and I had an amoeba, and I had H. pylori, and I thought, oh my gosh, when the doctors had said nothing, uh, just that I was chronically fatigued, and I was like, yeah, but what does that mean? Like, how do we... (laughs) I know that, that?" yeah. Right? And the answer was, well, why don't you just take a two-week vacation? I was like, are you kidding? (laughs) I I have taken vacation before, but I really don't think that's going to solve the problem. Um, And so then I became curious as I was sick and I couldn't really dance um, because I didn't have the energy. That's when I started to, you know, really to study up on who I wanted to study with. Who, You know, I had heard of biohealth and that's how how I had first found out about uh, the parasites and and the H. pylori and the adrenals, and then I wanted to know how how do I how do I uh, learn this myself? Um, and that's when I came across Reed and him teaching this course. And I had been interested for a while. I think it was about two years out after I had finally started to feel better. But in that time, I was doing a lot of studying and realized that I really wanted to help people. I wanted to help people know the things that I uh, that I um, that I didn't know at the, at the time when I got sick and how could I help prevent that from happening for other people or even help them resolve some of the, um, the stress on their system currently. And so that's when I had found Reed and I did his program and really discovered uh, more in depth about what optimal health really looks like and how it actually feels in, your bo- in one's body. Mm-hmm. So being a dancer, I assume you were somewhat health conscious. I thought so. <laughs> I mean, I had, orga- I had organic croissants, which I thought was because it was organic, it was probably okay. Um, uh, and I had, you know, I really wasn't eating for my metabolic type. Uh, you know, as I was dancing, it was just more carb dominant because of the demand, although I'm a very strong protein type, so it's actually, I was really going against my own metabolic type, even though I thought I was eating, you know, fruits and vegetables, but, and 
organic fruits and vegetables, but I didn't feel well. And I was like, gosh, like I, I could just eat fruits and vegetables all day and still not feel satisfied. So I thought that I was being healthy, but I really wasn't being healthy for me. Hmm, gotcha. That's a super important. That was a big change for me personally. I was eating mm. totally the opposite like you were, and I was like, okay, took the test, very strong protein type, and remember eating you know, kind of red meat and, and lots of meat for like the first time, especially red meat for a while, and I was like, oh, wow. I feel great. My muscles have strength again. It's like this is, this is what I yeah. should have been eating. So you know, you kind of learn, and you just uh, it's just part of that journey. You just learn different things about yourself, and and um, it's amazing. Diet is a huge, huge factor. Huge. Oh, absolutely. So, and especially knowing what, like as as you had mentioned, knowing what to eat for your body. I I think that's the biggest thing I come across with clients is they're just like, I want to know what to eat. There's so many different diets out there. Uh, the whole thirty, the paleo. I mean, it could go on forever. But and nobody, everybody's confused. They're just confused, and then they get overwhelmed, and then they just go back to what they were eating. Um, until I really share with them, well, let's get you on something sustainable, <laughs> something that's yes. going to work a lifetime. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to think I was I was being super restrictive, and then I thought, boy, you know, if I put them on this diet, I recommend this this way of eating that they're going to be like, oh, I'm just all these rules and restrictions, like I shouldn't eat this, and I'm better to eat this, and there's you know, good, better, and best, and I just, I thought that would be something that people wouldn't like, but people actually loved it, like you said, because they're so confused, and so when you yeah. finally clear the clear the air, clear the water out, it's like here's what you should be eating, it's such a relief because we're not thinking, oh, I'm eating this, but I don't know if this is good for me. There's that subconscious stress or even conscious stress that comes with eating. So once you kind of line it out for somebody, it was a stress reliever for them instead of being something super restrictive. Absolutely, absolutely. And especially here in New York, I mean, everybody's so um, – <laughs> has no time, as they would say. Um, and so to clear up the confusion, save them energy that they're wasting on worrying about what to eat next. Yes. And I say it reduces exactly. cortisol. <laughs> Just that yeah. one thing alone reduces cortisol stress. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. So fairly health conscious, but, you know, as much as you understood and knew and then heard about bi- – so I was curious, how did you hear about bile health? Do you recall how that came about? Uh, yes. The doctor that I was working with at the time had been using a uh, biohealth lab. And so then that's when I started looking to different, um, different programs that offered training um, and could use the lab. Um, mm-hmm. I had studied at the Czech Institute, and um, so I was also familiar of biohealth through them as well. Mm. Gotcha. So gotcha. it's okay. kind of been something that was just in my sphere. I had heard of it. I had, you know, I had ha- I knew other practitioners and exercise coaches and wellness practitioners that that had had used the lab as well. Okay. All right. So, how long did it take for you to get from where you were, where you couldn't hardly walk up the stairs, couldn't perform like you had been doing for years? How long was that process to get from okay, I'm feeling terrible to all right, I'm on top of this. Well, the doctor I was working at at the time, it's kind of funny because I was like, I have a month to get better. I had just landed a job at the Metropolitan Opera working with uh, Placido Domingo. He was the lead opera singer for uh, The First Emperor. And it was just the most amazing, exciting experience for me. And I was like, I have a month to get better. Like, I am not mixing this show. This is like one of the most exciting jobs of my life. (laughs) So he kind of laughed at me. He's like, Okay, like you impatient New Yorkers. I said, <laughs> I said, yeah, but when you land a job like this as a dancer, you're getting paid really well for it. Like that's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, we have to do everything it takes. I don't care how much I have to spend. I need to get better. And so he's like, okay, we might just have to add in some, you know, in order to get rid of certain things. He's like, we might have to do a more medical approach on the front end and then on the back end support you a lot more. So uh, I was, I, I mean, I was doing about 
30 supplements at each meal. So it was funny because I would wow. be performing and I'd stop and everybody would be like, what are you doing? Like at our breaks, because I would have like all these supplements to take and then I would be packing my lunches full of protein. And like that was very odd then because, I mean, when everybody else was carrying sandwiches or like, I mean, some veggies and things like that, I came with my, you know, sausage and sauerkraut. <laughs> but, um, you know, I I just I did whatever it took. I, that's and I was feeling a little bit better uh, when I started performing, but it was because of the supplemental support that I was even able to to get through it. Mm-hmm. Kind of propping you up that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because, mm-hmm. uh, but it, I I did not feel my best until probably I would say at least six months out. Okay. I knew that was That's the worst I would point. feel, <laughs> but then mm-hmm. I, I could feel the shift um, mm-hmm. as I was getting better. That's an important point you're making there. So it takes some time, and you're right. It's like, oh, it's a tough position for a practitioner to be in. Oh, all right, you got to get me re- better in one month. <laughs> That's not what yeah. I want to hear. It's like, okay, get realize it's for the long haul. Uh, for sure, that, that's a big point. That's uh, that's setting the expectation. I think in the beginning with clients, it's going to take a little bit of time. So be patient. You know, we got to kind of check people out, make sure they're aware of that, so they're not disappointed or or jump ship. Mhm. Absolutely, absolutely. And I I say that up front that this, this is no quick fix. Um, if you want something sustainable that's going to create wellness over time, and also an education that's going to help you to establish a nutritional foundation um, that that that's going to take time that there's no quick fix and if you want a quick fix that's okay I'm just not your I'm just not your woman <laughs> oh, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so when it comes it, to the FD and training what what were some of the things you kind of took away from the course I think some of them the biggest thing that's for me um, And I'd like to actually go through the training again um, because I'm curious as to see, you know, more so now um, how it's, you know, really teaching what it's teaching now. But the big things I remember when I took it is common doesn't mean normal. That a lot of your clients will have things that are very common like headaches, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's normal. And that was huge because it gave me context of how to, to explain to my clients that this is something that's very common in our society, and, but it doesn't mean it's normal. And so how do we, how, how do we start to um, really invite clients in to see what optimal health looks like and what it can feel like? So that was a big Where's takeaway. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry? Mm-hmm. How they're kind of raising the standards. Exactly, standards. exactly. Mm-hmm. Raising the standards of what it could feel like. It's not just, you know, a big one that I get here is I'm just getting old. And I remember one of the doctors I worked with, he would say, I have clients in my 80s, like, and they're getting healthier and healthier. And that's the standard that I hold for my clients is that you can get healthier and healthier. Yes, there is a certain level of aging that it does happen. We are under gravity. And yes, there is some process of aging. However, we can do it very gracefully and we can have more vitality and energy as we age. Mm. Amen to that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, the other takeaway is really the education that's very different than other nutrition coaches I come across, that there's a deep level of science and basis um, for educating your clients. Um, it's, it's very rich in the science end of things, and I think a lot of other uh, <clears throat> programs out, out there are not um, – who are training nutritional coaches uh, and, and it are not as in-depth and thorough. And the, also, I will say, there's great support in this, this community and constant up-leveling of education. So, um, and I really think that it's such an advantage being able to, ha- to test and, and be able to show clients what subclinically is, you know, going on. Mm-hmm. and happening mm-hmm. in their bodies. And it, even explaining the concept of what subclinical means has been very powerful for my clients. Mm-hmm. 
because the first thing they'll say is it's not all, it's just not all in my head there is something when the doctors have and I'm not bashing doctors I'm just saying when they might not have uh, because their testing is different um, they may not have discovered certain things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right oh yeah education is to get that's kind of the fun part for me, it's those uh, connections we get to make and explaining some things and, and shining some light on some areas. And you're right, they don't feel so like it. They're, they're kind of crazy. It's all in their head. There is something really going on here, and we've found some healing opportunities, so let's kind of work through those. And uh, I think, yeah, I think there's, uh, I don't know, there's something that's stress relieving about having a plan and having information in front of you that you can do something about. I think that's just a huge thing we bring to folks. Yes, absolutely, and I will also say it also um, it also releases the clients that once they found what or discovered some things that may be going on, the ones that want answers but don't really want answers <laughs> that they like the idea of continuing to search um, even though the answers are in front of them. So That's I think it also thing. helps to know the clients that are really not desiring to get better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've come across so, that, but in your oh, yes. practice, but I, mm -hmm, I have. You I give have. So the what is some, yeah. Go ahead. But no, go for it. Uh, no, just when you share with them what's going on and how this potentially could be um, an opportunity for healing, um, and it's it's interesting to me when then they don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. Very curious. Um, I've had the same thing to just run away. It's like, where, where did you go? <laughs> yeah. Had an awesome session I thought with you, and look at all the things we've found. I'm excited about things we've discovered and the connections we've made and the things we've got lined out to do. And you're just ready and raring to go, but you know, you, you can't want it more than they want it. And I always like when. Time. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, you know, and I, I don't, I don't know who told me this, but it's. I think it was actually Reed, but you know, some clients need their pain for whatever reasons, um, and it's so so true. And and it's not for us as practitioners to take that away from them. Um, and when they're ready, um, then come back. But it, it. But so why I think it's so powerful with the testing is they come in saying I want answers, but then there's certain ones, and to know that that's okay too, <laughs> to know that it's okay that. Some people don't, they want answers, but they want their pain more. Mm. Mm. Sad situation to be in, but, uh, you know, I think we, uh, we owe them what we have promised them as far as the agreement, and you put it out there. Yep. And we can't make people do stuff. And I, I maybe look on the positive side with this, too, is that it doesn't mean they won't eventually be ready to do it and kind of come That's to true. the end of the rope and decide to make that change eventually. So, you know, you yep. sow that seed and put it out there and you see kind of what happens. Absolutely, absolutely. And at least, like you said, you plant the seed, and they know where to go if they want to grow the seed into a flower. Yes, yeah. indeed. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so what segment of the population do you work with the most? Are you looking at like different uh, certain conditions that seem to come toward you or... Um, age group or demographic? Yeah, so there's three areas that I work with most. Um, it's usually digestive issues, but as you know, a huge one, uh, fatigue, and um, releasing weight. <clears throat> and it's usually the population most often, it's women who are very stressed out, are very successful here in New York, and on the type A end of things, and, but they really, the ones that are super successful are the ones that will do whatever it takes. Um, and they know they have to, they, they really want to do whatever it takes because they'll do anything to feel better because they know if they keep continuing to go on the way they are that it's only an upward battle. Mm. So those are usually the women that come to me. Okay. So maybe they're, you know, a, a question, I guess. So do you think people, that, uh, women that are in that position and they're successful, do you think that part of the reason they're successful is they have some, some mindset that's, that's correct that kind of lends itself to doing this work also? Or do you, do you see that? 
Mm, that's a very good question. I will say they usually tend to be very good students. <laughs> um, they tend to be good students you could see in their work lives, but they also tend to be good students um, just in life in general. So they're usually the ones that you say, okay, I'm going to invite you to do this and this and this. And they come back and they're like, I've done this and this and this. And there, there is just this level of willingness to do things differently, to see things differently. And that's the one question that I ask. I interview all my clients. I don't take anybody on unless I interview them. And the interview is both for them and for me um, because it, it's really about the right chemistry and that they feel that this is a right match. Because we will be working so intimately together, it has to feel like the right energy between us. So one of the questions I ask is, how willing are you from a, 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 you know, from a 1 to 10 scale? A 10 being I'm all in and committed to doing whatever it takes, or a 1. And don't take anybody who's not a 10. Mm -hmm. Because I do know that anybody who has not said they're a 10 has not been successful. Hmm. They've been successful to a degree, but the reason I say that is because of this component. And, and that, is, that really differentiates people from having you know, outstanding uh, testimonials and results to those that are just going to be okay. And we want them to have awesome results, don't we? Yeah, we do. We want them to have results and to be able to um, to commit. The, the important part I also think is that being able to commit to themselves, um, even when it doesn't look as though, um, because it is a long sustain, it is a, about sustainability and not just a quick fix. Often people will get discouraged early on if they don't get results right away. And so then explaining that, that sometimes things get a little worse before they get better, but also um, if they're not willing to be in that, and I do tell them about that up front, if they're not willing, then they're just going to want to quit. And so it really is a lot of the willingness keeping them in the game and also the educational component of me explaining what's actually going on or at the time, both emotionally <laughs> and uh, physically. Hmm. There's going to be hard times and ups and downs through the process. And so, yeah, Absolutely. you've got you've to be committed. Or otherwise, when those hard times come, you're just going to, going to quit. And that does nobody. Uh, any good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, fears come out. You know, there's the fear of, of success. There is the fear of failure. Often I find it's the fear of success because what does that mean if I'm healthy? Hmm. Um, so I do a lot around the, the paradigm shifting of the mind because, I, like I said, you, we can hand, I, I say this often to my clients, I could hand you the, the perfect nutritional program and, and, and yet then you may not do it or you may not commit to it. And it's not that they don't maybe even want it, but it's the paradigms and it's the mindset of where they are now and they're wanting something different. So we have to shift the beliefs to help to align with what they want going forward. So these conversations on mindset, are they all kind of in the, at the front end of, of working with somebody for you know, three to six months, or do they kind of come throughout it as it's time, or is it, is it more organic, or is it more uh, planned in your program? Uh, it's all of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I've been doing it for a while, now it has been more organic. Uh, I just started with a new client uh, uh, about a week and a half ago. And so already we've jumped into some of these components because there were these huge fears of her success and what it meant for her if, um, if she started committing to the program in the way that she really desires to commit, but it tied very much into her relationship and being loved. Uh, 
So very early on, it was very much about, I want to do this. I'm so excited to do this. I'm totally committed. And the minute her boyfriend was like, I don't know, is this going to really work for you? And, and, and standing for her, um, and that being her source of love and connection, she got very fearful of like, not getting his approval and his validation. So we're working with that because unless we address that, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, she just won't adhere because love and love is, is a sense of love and belonging are essential to the human body mm, and heart. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I would say some people, um, the people that come in that are like, okay, uh, the good students, I call them, the good students that are like, I did this and this and that. Okay, great. I'm feeling better. This is getting better. And then they're like, I did this and this and that. Sometimes I don't have to do very little coaching with them around like paradigm because they already have a lot of the beliefs in place to help them to succeed. Okay. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Did that help answer Every the person, question? <laughs> yeah, it did definitely. Very, okay. very good answer. I like I like to answer ask those questions because you know, we got new folks that are uh, just starting to do some of this work, and uh, some of the things they might come up against, or if it's, oh, it's not just like in the course or textbook, or mm-hmm. there's something a little different going on. I like to hear that. Yeah, other people experience this, and some people take a little more effort or more. A uh, different approach. Uh, every case is different. They're not like we say. We're not cookie cutter at all. And I think once Mm-mm. you once you deliver those test results and make some of those recommendations, that's where some of the real work starts. Is the coaching process and the education. Yes, I find that that is the big one of the biggest things in the uh, what seven or eight years that I've been doing this is that it's really the art also of coaching. There's the art of it because. I used to have this coach who would say to me, um, you, you can, how did he say this? It was so, it was so great. You can, you can go fast in coaching, but sometimes you can't go too deep too quickly. So it's really an art of being able to say, how much does this person need now to get where they want to go in, but not so deep that it blows them up and their brains up and their whole ecosystem up. So it's really an art of bringing the coaching in with the science of nutrition as well as you know, the science of the FDN work and being able to really see them as a whole person and how, how quickly do I move but also how much and when do I put on the break. Um, because you can, you can go too quickly too fast or excuse me, too deep too fast and that will just, it will just overwhelm them. Mm-hmm. Like, just like you said, with like the, the diet and lifestyle changes, you know, you can give them 50 things to do, but that's not going to help them. They've got to take it one at a time and work through that and add those things in there. I guess you can do that with uh, when you get into some of the mindset things uh, also. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I say that I have a 12-week pro, uh, program, um, and we meet every week for 12 weeks. And I say it, it's, the, uh, it's called my transformational program. And when I take it through, take them through, it involves both the transformational coaching but also um, Metabot typing and FDN. And when I take them through it, I said, I could probably give this all to you in two sessions. I could give it to you all in two sessions. But the thing is, is you'll be so confused and so overwhelmed and not know, you know, how to integrate any of this in a systematic way. And, and, and so a lot of the feedback at the end of the 12, 12 weeks, they're like, you're right, Danielle, I could have learned this in two or three sessions, but I would have walked away with not the integration of the material and been completely overwhelmed. So I always say it's bite-sized pieces each week. Each week builds on the next week, builds on the next week, builds on the next week. And I've been doing that program for about um, – about eight years now, that same exact program. And um, I will say it, oh, I've tested it over the eight years, and, and the, the definite slow integration is always the most sustainable. I get letters from clients still saying, I'm still doing what you told me, and I always have to be like, can we reframe that to like 
because I really try to teach them how to empower themselves, that it's not me telling them, it's me inviting them to step into the space to heal themselves, and I'll help guide them on that journey, um, but they're making the choices. <laughs> it's very different, it's very different uh, use of words and a lot of times if they don't start to own it then it they and they push it back on you that's actually that not taking the leadership role of health and wellness into their lives and that's really important very much so that's a real that's a huge point right there definitely definitely let's see let's ask uh, i was going to say that's good that's awesome stuff um, Thank you. Well, I, I, threw it, I threw it out there if anybody wanted to ask you a question. So if you're open to those, if we do have anybody on the line that wants to <laughs> uh, ask Danielle a question, they're certainly welcome to. Uh, if you want to just dial one there on your keypad or bring you on there or just uh, keep listening to everything that she's, uh, she's laying down here either way. All right, so as far as um, structuring your services, so you kind of have like a, a a 12 week program that you do you work in metabolic typing you work in FDN you work in some of the tra transformational work there so um, do I could maybe ask you how many how many people that's all that they need the 12 weeks is plenty or do you kind of go on and go further if they need to how does that seem to work for you yeah thank you I would say that I would say about 70% of people are good in the 12 weeks. They, they get where they want to go. They really feel satisfied. Um, and it doesn't mean that there's not more work to be done, but they're, they feel good. They feel like they want to start to marinate longer with the material because I do give – I'm like a handout queen. I love handouts. Um, and um, – they just want to marinate with it. They, I often have clients come back even a couple of years later and say, now I'm ready to go deeper, or I need a refresher, or let's check my metabolic type again. So, um, And I would say about 30% are eager, and they just want to keep going deeper, deeper. They want to know more about their bodies. They want to discover more. They want to do more of the transformational coaching work. So that I would say about 30%. But most do that 12-week program, um, and they feel really solid. They have the understanding of what to eat for their bodies, how to integrate it. We've already worked through um, quite a bit of uh, blocking points in the paradigm-shifting realm and belief system. Um, and then if they want to take it further, we would we would we would go into the next level is a four month program that I do. Okay, additional four months. Yes. Mhm. Mm okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Usually, that tends to be so, people who are um, more severe cases. Mhm. Mm right. Right. Are, are the people that you don't take on? Like as far as maybe conditions or situations going, I know mindset's part of that, but are there the people that you just prefer to, or there, is there a group that you prefer to work with? Maybe let me rephrase that: Is there a group of, of people you just prefer to work with? Yes, I prefer to work with um, again those those three areas, like fatigue issues, digestive issues, and also um, releasing excess weight. Those are like the three areas I like to stay. Anything outside of that, I like to usually refer out. Um, I, and I have people that I, I do refer to, but those are the most, the, the areas that I feel most comfortable and competent and um, that I can provide the best, highest quality service to them. Gotcha. That's important. You so know this your thing client. like Lyme and uh, in issues like that, I, I definitely refer out. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, well, we've got about two, 20 minutes left in the call, so I wanted okay. to see if you could maybe lay down some. Uh, I know you've, you've done this already, already, but uh, what about some business tips for FDM practitioners or those going through the course? Um, maybe if you can throw some things out there, more that you've kind of learned along the way there that uh, tell them to do or maybe not to do. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. Um, 
Well, I definitely think um, public speaking is a really, especially if you're starting your business, as much as I resisted it the first year um, because I did not want to do public speaking. It's a little overwhelming. I felt here in New York as well because there's so many practitioners, there's so many people doing uh, health and wellness work, um, and it just felt a little bit like the uh, saturated. Um, however, I think that that is a really important um, important way to get yourself out there and talking about the work because as we talk about it, we learn it even better and more deeply. Um, and it also allows us to connect with more people that, um, that need our services and really want our services. So I feel like that was a really important shifting point in my, um, in my business and in my, um, in my uh, co coaching practice. Um, I would also say continuing, I think community is big, So, and also really liking the people that you're working with. So like when I refer to people, it takes me a long time to actually um, refer to certain people because I really want to have a relationship. So I think relationship building is super important for me in my in my. Um, in, in, in my coaching practice because I want to make sure that I have either worked with these people directly that I have referred to or that I know a lot about them and have a very strong relationship about the work that they do. So I think building relationships, you can never go wrong with building relationships. It can only increase uh, your business. I know there's people that I have met um, even you know, in London who refer me clients um, because I've built a relationship and they know the work that I do and, and, and other people th you know, in, in California and, and um, throughout the country. So I really feel that that's a great way to build your business is really develop relationships with people you like. I have to specify that because, um, and I don't mean that it's that, that you don't like other people, but people that are very, that you feel and uplift you when you're around them, that you, that have really great energy that you want to be around because most likely that's who your clients want to be around too. Mm, and of course, good point. that are very competent. Mm -hmm. um, and I would also say I really, really emphasize the, the actual doing any type of, uh, of coaching around, um, around coaching, learning how to be a good coach will also build your business because you're going to be able to connect with that client in a way that allows them into the process um, and, and, feeling, and, and really being able to hold a safe space energetically for them. Because the work is so important and, um, and, and so prolific that we need to really be able to also have that art of coaching. I think that's really super important. Um, because we can go too fast and we can lose clients, excuse me, too deep, and we can lose clients because of that. I know I've made mistakes like that um, myself, and we really want to know how to look at the client holistically, and that being a good coach and being able to know the right questions to ask um, them as an emotional body is just as important. That's great. That's three awesome tips there. Um, public oh, speaking is you. a big one that we talked about. Yeah, and I agree too with that. Just got to get out there. And like you said, that uh, that you kind of learn the material better and know it deeper when you do it in public and you teach it and you do public speaking. I've I've definitely found that to be the case. There's uh, classes I've taught on a regular basis for years, and every year it just kind of gets better and better, and some, somehow it just gets better and better because I'm more deeply involved and I know it better, um, and I can read audiences much better than I used to. It's just one of those things, like you said, mm. just dive in, get in there, start doing it. It may be uncomfortable. It may be, may be painful or really bad the first time you do it, but you got to get started somewhere. Get out there and start speaking and be known so people know you're out there. I've had, had people say that before, and it's kind of a, I guess it kind of makes me think every time people say that, like, well, how do people hear about you? I'm like, well, it's, most of the time it's word of mouth, but I do do mm -hmm. some public speaking, things like that, but it's like they're just because they're amazed at what I'm able to do and, and, and how I work and the results that they're getting, they're like, why don't, it's almost like, why doesn't everybody know about you? You're so amazing. I'm like, I'm like okay, well, thanks for the compliment there, but it makes <laughs> me be like, okay, well, 
Maybe there's something I need to do on my side to make sure people do know about me so we can help folks, more people. Exactly, uh, and that's you, what's so important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did, did you use any of Breed's uh, lecture uh, packages or anything when you started? Maybe the stress and hormones or any kind of handouts? Absolutely. That was such a helpful guideline when I started speaking. I've spoken at Lululemon here in New York um, and, and other, uh, other. I can't even remember all the different places I spoke, but, um, and I used his handouts and his, and, and his, his outlines, and it just gave me a beautiful structure to follow. And then I could add in things that I also felt was important, but it gave me something to start with and not get overwhelmed with getting started which I think is really important because then you can just start to do it um, without feeling like frozen or paralyzed. Yep. Getting started is hard sometimes. I know a lot of people, I think I'm that same way too. If I can get some kind of framework to start with, I can build on that, kind of like I was saying with the classes I teach. They're, they, they build. They just get better. In some ways, there's more information. In other ways, it's more concise, or I find what works seems to work better for yes. more people. It's just that evolution as a practitioner. So, Yeah. Just get out there and start moving. Get moving in a direction. You know, the, the people that don't succeed are the people that don't do anything. So there's going to be some failure along the way, and it's actually an indication that you're, that you're doing something. So it's better to do something than not do anything at all. So jump out there <laughs> right. and don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's, you know, the other thing I think is like, you know, have I studied enough? Am I well, you know, am I well, well studied, you know, what is that, uh, like well studied already or, you know, or I don't know enough and it's just like, you know what you know now and the only place to start is here. And so you just take what you know now and then you just build on that just like, you had said building in your in your lectures and your presentations. You will just continue to build on what you know, and that add in and bring along. Or you may shift a direction, and that's okay too. All of it's okay. I think the most important thing is is that we're aware of the shoulds when I should be doing something because that's out of alignment. Whenever we hear ourselves, I should be doing something. You want to hear the desires in your words. You want to hear, I want to do that, or I'm thrilled to do that, or I can't wait. I'm really excited about doing that. That's where you're aligned. Um, so following that voice, I think, in a business is so important because I've done, I've done both. And I know whenever I've been in the shoulds, it was never, uh, it was never the right energy for my business, um, nor did it bring me very much um, because it wasn't in the desire of what I wanted to do. So listening to those wants and desires are super important um, and it doesn't have to necessarily be done wh- one way, but hearing your own voice in in building your practice is what's really important. And that I takes like that time. I want versus should. Want yeah, versus you have should. to follow. And that's what I work a lot with um, my women around because I, I basically work with mostly women. The only time I work with men is by referrals. Um, but mo- I mean, most of my women are referrals too, but um, I don't advertise to men. Um, it's just that I've studied a lot around uh, women's studies and a lot around what makes a woman work and how she's very different than a man in, in, in both um, the workplace and as well as in life and career and actually um, how she functions and actually can build energy. And, one of the, and I really I, I bring this up because you know, there's so many women, especially in New York, who are adrenally fatigued in the workplace, whether they're CEOs or super overachieving, successful women, um, or moms. You know, moms are super successful too. All the work they do is <laughs> amazing to me, not being a mom, um, except for a furry, a, a, a mother to a furry baby. Um, <laughs> But um, and really being a woman and what that is and how that looks very different, when, especially talking around adrenal fatigue and and in the workplace and what she needs to do to really boost her feminine energy and without boosting that feminine energy and really having tactile ways of doing that, how she will again just get burnt out um, no matter what. So it's really about restoring her 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 feminine energy and. I have a handout to that really tactile ways for you to to boost your your female's um, feminine energy 
and restore in that way. And I find that really goes well when we're talking around fatigue um, for, for women. Hmm. Hmm. Sounds, sounds very great. Sounds awesome. Um, that's, uh, I'm impressed with everything you're putting down here today. It's been so enlightening <laughs> to me and encouraging at the same time. And um, I was going to say one thing you talked about, too, there is relationships. And that's, uh, that's, that's what it's about. I, I agree with that on, on so many levels. And that's part of what we try to do here at FDN. That's why we have these Friday calls. That was the, the, the main reason for a Friday call that we came up with years ago was just, hey, I want to let you guys know I'm out here. I'm alive. Mm. Um, there's a way to connect. Um, keep up with what's going on. That was the start, and then we tried to build a community from there. So the Association for FDM Professionals, so AFDMP, that's what we tried to do is build this community. So everybody's just building off of each other and helping each other out. And there's questions, and there's everybody's just growing and improving without within our community. And so that's that's I think Reed's done a great job of kind of bringing that around and and, and creating that because you're right, it's it's so important. It's not a not a competition. We're not trying to you know mm-hmm. for clients that. Type Thing. There's, there's plenty of people out there, um, but it's just like if best we, best thing we can do is help each other be better. That's going to build us, build the, the the industry, build the practice, everything that we're doing. Um, super critical it is. So I tell you guys, to stay plugged in. We want you to be part of, of what we're doing and connect with us. We'd love to hear from you in every way. On be on a Friday call, come on and talk to us, ask a question, send us an email, be active on the forums and. Um, be involved in our pro series calls. Anything we're doing like that, it's just everybody coming together. I love seeing the names. I get to do some of the pro series calls with uh, with Kendra now. Um, we had a great one last week with Wendy, or this week with Wendy Myers, and uh, it was neat to see all your names come up on the on the uh, attendance list there. So I see all these names I've talked to and people I know. It's just a a neat connection just to see you guys. So um, so stay close to us. That's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. You've done a great job with that. Indeed, indeed, and you're part of that too, Danielle. You know, you thank you, um, thank you, consciously or unconsciously, it just all kind of just you being on the call here. It's been been great for everybody, I know. Thank you. All right, so let's see here. So enjoy uh, it. Good, good. Well, we've got just uh, well, we've got about eight minutes left here, so. Okay. Um, a little bit about uh, marketing, how you do marketing. So is most of your marketing now kind of on the word of mouth referral all now? It, and you don't, it's not out there as much? Yes. Um, it, a lot of it's referral, but a lot of it's also I really have started to have one-on-one conversations um, with uh, a lot of uh, the women's groups I'm part of. So I will offer, uh, one of the ways that I like to market is to offer people to speak with me for um, like 25 minutes to 30 minutes for free. And to and I have different topics. So I put it out there that um, this week uh, I am offering a consult, three spots for a free consult around cravings. And then I and then we we do a consult around cravings, and I hear about basically what's happening for them, and I have a whole outline that I follow basically in 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 talking to them around um, just the example of cravings and where they are and what they're desiring for their bodies. So that's one way that works really well that I found is being able to have a conversation with people who are interested in what you do and I would say that the turn that really works well for me. That my my conversion rate is really good when when having these conversations. And plus, people don't feel as though they have to commit to anything other than having a conversation with you. So I think that takes the edge off of, and they don't have to pay you right off the bat either. So they can first discover if if this is something they'd even like. Um, so I do that every Wednesday. I call it Giveaway Wednesday. Um, you can borrow. That if you want um, uh, like to the listeners, and basically I, I I set a limit of how many sessions I am going to do for free, and just have a conversation with people, and and I really found that it's a great way to to connect with people who are interested in what you do, and even if they don't necessarily sign up that day, they also sign up later. I've had people sign up later and I've also had them refer other people. So it's a really, it's what works for me. I really like the intimacy of that. Um, being able to, to have these con, you know, consult, consult um, these different women's groups. Hmm. 
that's, that's one I've not really heard of directly. So that's a that's a good different way of approaching that. So and if you get Thank conversion you. and uh, and uh, you enjoy it too, it's a, definitely I can tell it's in your wheelhouse to do it that way. So it, you found something that works. Yes, yes, yep. And I mean, I also did a lot of online marketing in the beginning. Um, I think that's super powerful. Uh, if you like marketing that way, for me, it's not my favorite way of marketing. I still do it, but I was spending a lot of hours doing it, and I don't feel as it was. Um, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't the right fit for me. That's why I think. Uh, why I mentioned the shoulds so much. The shoulds because I felt I should do that and I would really like that. And the thing is, is that I'm a much better person on the phone or in person. It just works for me much better. And also connecting with doctors that I really like and having them refer me clients, that's another great way that I, I, I like getting referrals. Um, but it doesn't mean that I, I, I am turning I, I still do online marketing. I just don't do it to the degree that I used to do it because I don't enjoy doing it. And I do have uh, you know, my web designer and, and, and my assistant and things like that, but I, I still um, I prefer the conversations. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Definitely. Let's see here. So, so few minutes left here, but I did. Oh, go ahead. Can I just add something to that? So the whole point of well, why sure. I gave those two different viewpoints is because it really is about exploring what you want to do. Um, and I thought I wanted to do more of an online. Um, business um, and have gr online groups and things like that, which I did do. Um, and there's also really what discovering what works for you. So while there are a lot of marketing programs out there and things, it's also tuning in, and I'm big on this, tuning in with what really works for you and your voice. And that just comes with time in, in having a practice. Comes back to just trying something, do something, yep. and and see what works. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> you'll find it. Just keep going. <laughs> yes, very good. That's a that's a that's a good takeaway from the call today. Um, so, um, if they want to check out and see what you're doing, so what's a what's a good way to get in contact with you there to check out what you're doing? Maybe just your website. Is that the best way? Sure. Yeah, the the website is the best way. Um, you can. My website is getgorgeoushealth.com. So it's pretty easy. GetGorgeousHealth.com. Got it. Got it. I think we've got that linked on the article too that we had put out the announcement about the call. So you guys can check it out there. Oh, great. And then Danielle, you also mentioned to me a, a book that you wanted to share with people. Um, I'm gonna once I get that from you, we'll post it up there so people can download that. But you want to tell us what that book was about? Yeah, so this is when working with your female clients, basically um, how to keep their energy and really boost their energy, uh, especially around adrenal fatigue. So really learning how to have them integrate feminine ways of boosting their energy. A lot of times we are, um, or not a lot of times, we still do live in a very, uh, in a, a patriarchal society where women are, and, and, and there's a lot about this with Alison Armstrong. She's a, she studied men for about 25 years. She's phenomenal about what men and women and the interactions. She's one of the biggest geniuses I know around, um, around uh, relationships as well as what it is to be a woman and what it is to be a man and the beauties of both. And what she'll say uh, in regards to being a woman is that we are really bad versions of men. We try to be really bad versions of men, and we really need to discover what it is to actually be a woman and how to be a woman in corporations and in these fields that demand a very do, 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 uh, deadline, deadline, deadline. And women actually don't. We can do deadlines, but the feminine doesn't have deadlines. That's the feminine energy. And, um, and so there's ways that you can share with your clients how to balance between the masculine and the feminine energies. And I think that's really important when working with our female clients because until they start learning how to access and use their feminine for energy, um, I find that's the way it can be sustainable with their program so that they can have ongoing energy and really tap into um, 
how to do it as a woman in the world. Hmm. That sounds great. I'm looking forward to receiving that. And once we get it, we'll, <laughs> we'll post it for you guys there. And it uh, sounds awesome. That's great. So thanks Thank for sharing you. that with everybody. Yeah. Uh, you're so welcome. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, indeed. So it's been a great call. So we're, uh, we'll sign off here in a few a few seconds. But again, Danielle, thanks for being on. Everything you're sharing with us and and doing just awesome work that you're doing. And um, you got to ch- check her out. See what she's got going on. Learn from her. Uh, again, we're all part of this community, so we're going to help each other out. And uh, so you guys, uh, next week, uh, tune in for the call. Uh, next week, it's going to be an Ask Read. So uh, I assume that Re- uh, Read will be on. <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> I'll probably be on too. So. Um, you guys, uh, have your questions ready. Send those in to us, and we'll do our best to answer those, give you some good answers, and um, have a good time. So, uh, again, Danielle, thanks so much for being on. And you guys, well, thanks have so much awesome for having week- me. Thank you very much, and have a good week- weekend, Danielle, and everybody else out there, too. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.